Hey, welcome back to our DM Quick Tips, where we're going to talk about five quick tips from running games over the last 40 years. Um, so in this quick tip segment, this will be the first video in a series of videos where I'm going to be discussing various quick tips. And I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below so you can catch the whole series as it comes out. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, today I'll be talking about Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 1st Edition, but these tips could probably apply to virtually any edition or any role-playing game, really. So tip number one, though, definitely applies to the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and that's read the Osric. Now, my experience over the last year trying to remember how to play this game, reading the Osric is going to be the simplest way for you to go, um, just to get back into the 1st Edition like that. It's very simple, very clean language, tells you what you need to know without any of the extra fluff. And so, it, or it's just kind of like playing it back then when it was new and shiny and you could figure everything out because somebody else had read the book for you. Hey, tip number two, don't be afraid of character death. Now, as the DM, don't be afraid of it. Don't, like, make it so that your, your players don't have to have new um, characters. And players, don't be afraid of a new character. Have two or three of them ready to go. Uh, over the course of the adventure, you might lose one. If a player, if a character drops to zero, then you, they're going to be sitting out for a while. So just have one ready to go. It's not going to hurt you, um, and you might find another character that you actually like better because you don't know that next poison save, that character could be dead. Okay, tip three: the rules are significantly different in five, if, if, comparing first edition to fifth edition. I would recommend finding somebody who played 1st Edition, or at least 2nd Edition, if you really want to get into playing 1st Edition as a 5e player. It's just going to be so much easier for you. Uh, reading the Osteric is definitely going to help, but you're going to want to probably find somebody who has a little bit of experience, or at least watch some of my videos here, because you're going to get a little bit extra guidance that way. And that takes me to the question, how many versions have you played? Did your, is your first version still your favorite, or did a different version become your favorite after you played it for a while? Uh, please leave a comment down below. Tip number four. As, you, as the DM, don't be afraid to grab a monster and just reskin the heck out of it. Keep the stats, change its color, change its weapon. If it has fur, um, take away the fur. If it doesn't have fur, give it fur. Give it zebra stripes, whatever it takes. Don't tell the player the new name of your of, of your um, creature. Have them guessing. Maybe it's just a genetic mutation of an of an existing creature. You don't need to tell them that. They, you can keep them guessing, keep the game kind of fresh. Um, and uh, if they don't have a, mo a, a name to put on that monster, then they're not going to immediately just take the battle tactics for that particular monster. Because they're not going to know exactly how to respond. This is especially true if your players are pretty experienced. And whatever you do, don't show them a picture, obviously, because then the you know, game will be up. Alright, tip number five. If you usually play on a battle map, try Theater of the Mind. First for a change. If you usually do Theater of the Mind, try the battle map for a change. If nothing else, you're going to get a little bit of a different feel for the game, and uh, you might come to pre prefer one or the other in different circumstances and situ situations. And from my own experience, there are times when I will do battle map, and then the next combat might be a theater of the mind. And it might be a little bit of combination of both. Might have a little bit of battle map going on, but over in this area might be theater of the mind. So give it a try, see what you like. After all, the D&D roots are from a war game, so battle maps are not sacrilege. Um, and then for a bonus tip, a little bonus tip here, let's go ahead and keep track, DMs, keep track of which players have as far as their armor class, uh, any major stats that you're going to be checking against, just because that speeds up the play. Um, you don't want to uh, kill their immersion by asking them to read you a bunch of numbers. Just keep it uh, in your DM binder, cheat sheet type deal, and then just take a look at it yourself when you need to know that information. Uh, if there's a discrepancy, the players will be sure to let you know, don't worry. So, 
Well, thanks for taking a quick look. Uh, please let me know in the comments below what you think and what tips you might add uh, to a series like this. What uh, quick tips, DM tip, player tip, D&D, D&D First Edition, whatever that it is that you're wanting to throw a tip out for. Love to see it in the comment below. Otherwise, catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.